Good morning and welcome to worship with First Congregational UCC in Asheville, North Carolina. It is good to be gathered here by the river this morning. We are glad you are here. You know, rivers have been inspiring artists and composers and songwriters uh, and writers forever. Like Czech composer Badrick Smetana in the tome poem depicting the Moldau River as it traverses the countryside of his native Czech Republic. We heard that played so beautifully by Su Yan Yan just a minute ago. Then there's my own home state of Florida, whose state song is way down upon the Swanee River, far, far away. And of course, the Mississippi River is a constant in the writing of Mark Twain. Rivers in scripture often serve as transition points in narratives. We heard that a couple of weeks ago when we went down to the Jabbok River with Jacob as he wrestled with God until the break of dawn. The same was true of John when he was down at the Jordan River baptizing people. That was a turning point in their lives. And today uh, we'll hear about John's vision of a world at peace and what runs through the river of this new world or what i'm sorry what runs through this new world of peace it's a river of course we'll hear that later rivers also are vulnerable to our polluting ways singer songwriter and activist pete seeger in the last years of his life he dedicated those years to seeing that the hudson river was cleaned up. Uh, he lived there, it was in his backyard, and uh, he committed his work and energy to getting the Hudson cleaned up. Perhaps if we hear the call today and heed the call, we can follow Pete's example and get our own French Broad River cleaned up. Perhaps, perhaps. As we reflect some on rivers today, the invitation is to let them take our minds and our spirits wherever they will. What else might rivers teach us? To what new depths might they call us? As we settle in, Let's go to the river again and breathe in God's love. You breathe out God's love. You breathe in. Let us worship God. From the Moldau and the Czech Republic to the Mississippi in our own country, and from the Danube and the Rhine in Europe to the French Broad and Swannanoa in Buncombe County, rivers connect us, feed us, entertain us, soothe us. Rivers also bear the brunt of our conspicuous consumption trash, chemicals, chemicals, and overuse. The rivers call to us many things. Rest, relax, restore, and, and care, care for, for us and as we care, care for you. May we answer both calls. Let, Let us, us go, go down, down in the river, river to pray. 
As I went down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the starry crown? Good Lord, show me the way. Oh, sisters, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. Oh, sisters, let's go down, down in the river to pray. As I went down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the robe and crown? Good Lord, show me the way. Oh, brothers, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. Come on, brothers, let's go down, down in the river to pray. As I went down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the starry crown? Good Lord, show me the way. Oh, fathers, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. Oh, fathers, let's go down, down in the river to pray. As I went down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the robe and crown? Good Lord, show me the way. Oh, mothers, let's go down, let's go down, don't you want to go down? Come on, mothers, let's go down, down in the river to pray. As I went down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the starry crown? Good Lord, show me the way. Down in the River to Pray. We love the song. We love the idea of going down in rivers we know to fly fish, to tube, to splash and play, and yes, to pray. But some rivers, we wouldn't want to step foot in them. Pollution, litter, in some cases, sewage. There are many rivers in which we would not want to pray. We take a moment now to pray for rivers we wouldn't pray from. We pray for the health of those rivers, like our own French broad in these pictures. We pray for legislators to make decisions that act our rivers into well-being. We pray for ourselves that we wouldn't simply enjoy the abundance of rivers around us but that we would ourselves do all we can to act rivers into well-being. In silence, we confess. One fact remains that does not change. God has loved you loves you now, and will always love you. This is the good news that brings us new life. Thanks be to God.
Hi friends. So today is the last Sunday of the season of creation, but that doesn't mean that we have to stop celebrating creation at all. We can celebrate creation every day of every year. Um, but I've realized uh, earlier today when I was thinking about what creation means to me and to us, and I realized that one of the things that I haven't talked about this month in uh, our children time, children's time is I haven't talked about animals for crying out loud. Talked about water and um, trees and other things in creation, but I haven't talked about animals, which for some of you, animals are the most important part. I'm sure of it. Um, so you can see right here, um, along with a couple of different pictures, I have a couple of different animals, and I wonder if you can recognize them. I know you probably can, but I'll move my phone. So I have some elephants right here, a mama and her baby. I have a little turtle. This one is from Haiti. I have a camel back there, and then I have three, a little elephant family right here, all hand carved. So um, some of you probably already know this but I love elephants. And as it turns out, on Tuesday of this last week, September the 22nd, you might wanna remember that, put it on your calendars because it's an important date. September the 22nd was Elephant Appreciation Day. So, um, I think this is a perfect time for us to celebrate elephants, a perfect day to celebrate dogs and cats, fish, um, cows and horses, and all other sorts of animals and God's uh, creation because animals do so much for us. They love us. They provide for us. They do for us. Um, and uh, they are just wonderful parts of creation. Could you imagine a world without animals? I can't. I, it, it's, it's too difficult. Uh, I don't want to imagine a world without animals in it. And so I wanted to take a few minutes this morning to um, give you a time to be thankful for animals, the animals that are in your life, whether it's a, a cat or a dog or a fish or a turtle that you have as a pet or a horse, um, whatever animal um, that you love that is your favorite animal. I want you to just give thanks to God for that. Um, and so we're going to do that while we pray this morning. So if you will, grab the hand of somebody who's next to you or hug yourself if you're by yourself this morning. Uh, as we pray. Gracious God, thank you so much for giving uh, or putting animals in your creation. Um, you know how much we appreciate animals and how much we love animals, God. And so we just want to give you thanks for those pets and those friends um, that, are, that you have created um, in the world. 
So thank you, God. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you. Peace be with you. Very good. A reading from Revelation. The angel then showed me the river of life-giving water, clear as crystal, which issued from the throne of God and of the Lamb, and flowed down the middle of the streets. On either side of the river grew the trees of life, which produce fruit twelve times a year, once each month. Their leaves serve as medicine to heal the nations. There will no longer be any curse. The throne of the Almighty and of the Lamb will be there, and God's subjects will serve faithfully. They will see the Most High face to face and bear God's name on their foreheads. Night will be no more. They will need no light from lamps or the sun, for our God will give them light, and they will reign forever. If we respond to these words, then for us, they have become the word of the still speaking God. Thanks be to God. Sometimes when I'm casting about for a sermon, I just have to sit and think for a while. And sometimes all I have to do is go to my inbox. <laughs> and that's what happened this week as I was reflecting on the words in um, at the end of Revelation, this vision of peace. I was reflecting on that. And then I read a devotion written by one of our members, Penny Stokes. And I'm like, wow, this says it. And so I asked Penny if she would be willing to um, uh, to share her devotion with us for our sermon time today. And she said yes. And so, here is uh, a word from the Word from Penny. Thank you, Penny. The Tree of Life. It's a metaphor we find throughout history, in every religious tradition, in every culture, from ancient Persia to, native, to the native peoples of North America. It's an archetype that permeates the literature mythology, and religion of almost every culture in the world. In Judeo-Christian tradition, the Tree of Life bookends the sacred texts from Genesis to Revelation. In Genesis, the Tree of Life stands at the center of the Garden of Eden. After Adam and Eve eat the fruit of the Tree of Knowledge of Good and Evil, they are banned from the Garden to prevent them from also eating from the tree of life. But in Revelation, 
in a vision of the final restoration of the universe, we encounter the tree of life again, producing fruit and offering its leaves for the healing of the nations. Not one nation, all nations. Not one religion or culture or people, all religions, all cultures, all people. In a world marked by division and dualism, it's all too easy to adopt a Facebook perspective of right and wrong. We talk about America as if it were the only nation on earth. We separate into us and them. We're mainly concerned with what affects our own tiny little sliver of the universe. And everybody else can get out of the way or face the consequences. But that is not God's perspective. I don't think God much cares about issues like ownership or national borders or languages or skin colors or cultural differences. As I read the Bible, what matters to God is love, empathy, compassion, care for the most vulnerable. Yesterday, our new neighbor, Deb, came to our front gate accompanied by the municipal surveyor and a translator. Now the surveyor had discovered that according to the original schematics of the neighborhood, fully a third of Deb's backyard, including her brick wall and a large wedge of her garden, actually was included in our property. We had a choice, several choices actually. We could claim our land back and force her to tear down and rebuild her wall and thus greatly reduce her yard space, the value of her property and the quality of her life. Or we could demand payment for our land. The price according to the survey, sur surveyor was up to us. Or we could let it go and sign an agreement not to pursue the matter e any further. We opted for being a good neighbor. In the end, we've lost nothing because we didn't know that was our land in the first place. The brick wall that borders our backyard still stands and Deb's dogs run freely through that triangle of grass that the government said should have belonged to us. But we don't care. We have enough, enough space, enough yard, enough of everything that gives our life joy and pleasure. And if giving up a small strip of property is the price of peace with our neighbor, so be it. In the long run, it doesn't belong to us anyway. We're just caretakers and temporary ones at that. The tree of life is for the healing of the nations. And every time we reach out to heal, every time, no matter how seemingly insignificant the healing might be, we participate in the coming of the realm of God. We open the floodgates for the river of life to flow out to those around us. Others may not recognize it. We may not even see it. But our healing actions, large or small, add to the yes in the world and make life on this earth a better place. In The Great Divorce, C.S. Lewis offers an interesting perspective about heaven and hell. Both, he says, work backward. For the godly person, even the struggles and heartaches of the past change so that forgiven sins and remembered sorrows take on the quality of heaven. And similarly, for the ungodly, the greatest successes and pleasures of life take on the qualities of hell and are remembered only with dreariness and regret. And thus, Lewis says, at the end of all time, the blessed will say, we have never lived anywhere except in heaven. And the lost, we were always in hell. And both will speak truly. Eternity begins now. The river of life is flowing. The tree of life offers itself for the healing of the nations. May we be part of that healing. Amen. Prayers of the people, this time with the camera on.
Let us pray. Holy One, we thank you for the gift of rivers, for the ways in which they connect us, entertain us, feed us, restore us. Help us always to keep our minds and hearts open to learning what rivers might teach us. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the health of rivers. Even as we heed the call of clean rivers to rest and restoration, remind us of the need to heed the call of polluted rivers as well, to respond actively to their suffering and to the suffering of all the living beings that need them to survive. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We take a moment now simply to be with the river, to hear its call, and perhaps to respond. In the quiet, we listen. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The Prayer of Jesus Eternal Spirit, Earth Maker, Pain Bearer, Life Giver, Source of all that is and that shall be, Father and Mother of us all, Loving God in whom is heaven. The hallowing of your name echoes through the universe. The way of your justice be followed by the peoples of the earth. Your heavenly will be done by all created beings. Your commonwealth of peace and freedom sustain our hope and come on earth. With the bread we need for today, feed us. And the hurts we absorb from one another, forgive us. In times of temptation and test, spare us. From the grip of all that is evil, free us. For you reign in the glory of the power that is love, now and forever. Amen. Rivers are such abundant places. So much water, so much beauty. And some rivers, many sources of food, lots of biodiversity. It's hard to feel want at the edge of a river. The offerings we share reflect a similar kind of abundance. It is out of that abundance and with great joy that we offer our gifts to God. We all are invited to give as we are able. together in prayer. God of our plentiful provision, we bring these offerings today grateful for all we have received. Although we know that your abundant grace is meant for all creation, sometimes our egos have us complaining when things don't go our way or believing that our blessings are the result of certain correct behaviors. Help us a 
abandon our concerns with justification and favor, and instead use these gifts with a focus on innovative methods to follow your call. Working for creation care, sharing the good news of your kingdom on earth, and in service to those who have not benefited from our good fortune. For we realize our actions are far more pleasing than any hollow thought or devotion. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Wait in the water. Wait in the water, children. of the running wave to you, of water flowing, rising, sometimes receding. May the stream of your life flow unimpeded. Deep peace of the running wave to you. Amen.